Hello. In this video, I'd like to talk about some of the A plus networking objectives, and specifically on this one, the uh, IP addressing, DNS, gateways, and then we'll look at some uh, network card properties. But the big one is to look at IP and IP addressing. And my objectives, structure can't not have objectives, it's IP addressing, static and dynamic, and this will be for IP version 4. We have two versions of the internet protocol available to us right now. IP version 4, which is the one that we are out of addresses with, and IP version 6, which is transitioning into uh, more popular use. And then along with the IP address is, we'll have to talk about the subnet mask. Then DNS, domain name server, how we find a particular resource, www.leaderquest.net or www.google.com. The gateway, which is going to be the router, how we get out of our uh, local network. Without a gateway, without routers, we can't get onto the internet. You've probably seen the, com the commercial that the internet runs on Cisco. Cisco makes routers. And then we'll look at how to configure the alternative IP and then look at some uh, network card properties of full half duplex, a speed, wake on LAN, quality of service, and then uh, BIOS very quickly. The other type of IP address that we will look at uh, a little bit is IPv6. IPv6, uh, much better protocol, but probably not as, I say, we'll say, complex as IPv4. We don't have to do as many things and, and with it as we do with IPv4. So first, network protocols that we use to get from point A to point B to get a resource. We have uh, TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol is a suite. They work together uh, to do these things. And Net, Net BIOS, Net BUI is a protocol. It was a, it's a, it was a Microsoft protocol which was popular uh, for a long time, but uh, no network number is in its structure. It's strictly a broadcast protocol, which means that it can't go from one network to the other. Uh, and when we talk about broadcasts, the more broadcasts we have, the uh, <clears throat> more bandwidth that, that's going to be taken uh, from, our, from our systems. And as you can see here, it cannot be routed on an internet network useful only in one single broadcast domain. Some terms that for A plus may not be significant when you get to network plus they will be significant. TCP IP is the only protocol we really need to know about. It's the one that the internet runs on. Uh, it's the internet protocol ensures that packets can be tagged uh, with information needed so that they are sent to specific networks and then from specific networks to specific hosts on those networks and we'll look at how we find the specific host on the individual networks. So anatomy of an IPv4 address. It has two parts, the network part and the host part. When we, when we look at these things, uh, we see things like down at the bottom 10.2.3.4 and associated with it will be a subnet mask. The subnet mask is the string of ones, when we look at binary, that's going to tell us how much of the address is network and how much of the address is host. In this one, 255 will tell us that the first octet, the reason it's an octet is we make these numbers up with eight ones, eight ones octet, a byte. Uh, so we have what's also known as a dotted quad. We have four numbers and they're separated by dots or periods between them. The other one down there, the example 192.168.3.4, uh, the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, the network number is then going to be 192.168.3. The host portion of it's going to be zero. So in this case we're going to have a much longer network address in a much shorter uh, address space, which means that we can have fewer addresses in that space. And in fact, for the one at the bottom, it's going to be 
on what we'll see in a minute is a private class C network it's going to have 254 total hosts available on it okay so in IPv4 we have two parts of the address the network part and the host part and they will be written like actually let me get a blank slide in here and kind of scratch out some stuff so if we have an address like 192.168.1.2 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255 5.0 we know that this part is the network part so 192.168.1 and if we put a dot zero on there that's going to tell us what the network address is what would happen in the subnet mask is when we and 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 is a is the proper term you think multiplying zero times this then we're going to get a zero that's going to be our network address the other thing that we have that we can't use to assign to uh, uh, workstations or printers or any other kind of host is a broadcast address. Broadcast address is one that goes to all stations and it's the one that has all ones in the end here and since we're talking about class full and these are called class full addresses when they use these particular subnet masks we'll see how they're arranged here in just a minute when we have that then the broadcast address address is going to be the 255 address so we have 0 0 to 255 are the possible numbers and the way we get the possible numbers is we have placeholders in binary we'll start with one the really good thing about binary is I got to be able to multiply by two so we have a 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 and that's one two three four five six seven eight places if we have eight ones in here then if we add all of those up that's going to be 255 what each of these numbers in the address represents and the subnet mask is all zeros here to get the network address but what these numbers represent if we had the two we would have a zero 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 one zero when we add all those up we get two so that's the way we do the binary to decimal conversion decimal to binary conversion either direction computers use binary tried using decimal early on voltage variations made it so that it was unreliable a zero or a one which is means that we either have a voltage turned on or we don't have a voltage turned on so we have part of as the IP address we have the IP address 192.168.1.3 or whatever we have and then we have the subnet mask that goes along with it 255.255.0 which tells me that this is network this is network this is network because they have the 255s here and then the, any part that's a zero is going to be the host portion of the uh, network address hopefully that makes a little bit of sense uh, when we look at that and I think class full and these are class full because they'll have 255 uh, network uh, subnets are the only things that you need to know for uh, a plus when you get to network plus you'll have to break them up a little bit more so how do they get assigned and this is not necessarily in order we will look at each of these things uh, an IP address has 32 or 128 bits the one that we just looked at the IPv4 has 32 bits 32 ones in it dotted quad 8 bits in each of the addresses we can go up to 255 in each of the uh, uh, octets separated by a period the 128 bits is going to be IPv6 uh, has 128 bits typically we're going to use 64 of those bits for network and 64 of those for host so we have a tremendous number of addresses IPv4 we're out of addresses there are no more available to be assigned uh, IPv4 uses a 32-bit address to identify the network connection because um, currently a shortage actually the shortage is in fact that all of the addresses 
that are available have been assigned. Doesn't necessarily mean they're in use, but they have been assigned uh, to vendors. IPv6 uh, part, created partially due to the shortage of IPv4 addresses, uh, mostly due to the uh, uh, shortage of IPv4 addresses. We, we've been out worldwide for some time, and it uses 128 bits, and that's going to and, and there are 340 undecillion. I think I've got a slide here in a few minutes just to show you kind of what that number looks like. Um, addresses available, 2 to the 128th if, if you want to do the math. IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, is responsible for keeping track of assigned IP addresses. That's where you would go to buy the address set. Public addresses, and we're going to talk about public and private here in a couple of minutes. Cu public addresses, ones that can be routed on the Internet, have to be paid for public or private addresses anybody can use. So how do they get it assigned? A MAC address is embedded, is embedded on a network adapter and, and if when we talk about uh, being embedded on a, a network adapter it's going to be a 48-bit a, a hexadecimal number that is assigned burned into the NIC at the manufacturer. So these MAC addresses will be unique. IP addresses can be assigned manually or by software. Manually we can go into the NIC and assign the address or we can get the address assigned to us by a process called DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. The DHCP servers will assign us IP addresses uh, from a scope, a range of addresses that are available to be assigned on that network to us. Okay, I've opened my network connections on my machine, several NICs or several interfaces, a couple of virtual interfaces, a physical interface is available here. If I go to the properties, how are we going to assign these addresses? We have a number of things that are available here. TCP IP version 4 properties obtain an IP address automatically, which tells the system, the NIC, to get it from the DHCP server. Uh, the DHCP server will then assign us an address. By default, in Windows machines and in Linux machines, they're configured to get an IP address automatically. When they start up, they'll send out a what's called a discover packet. They're trying to discover a DHCP server. Uh, the DHCP server will then offer us an address. Once the address has been offered, the, D, the uh, workstation, the NIC, will take the first address that it's offered, first address if there are multiple DHCP servers, and then it will request that that address be assigned to it. After that, the server will send us an acknowledgement that we can actually use that address. So, obtain them automatically. The other thing that happens here is an automatic private IP addressing called a PIPA addressing, which means that if we went through that automatic process and the DHCP server didn't respond or wasn't available, we'll assign ourselves an address. And that'll, that address will start with 169 dot 254 dot something dot something and the subnet mask will be 255 dot 255 dot 0 dot 0 when we do that if we wanted to make a static assignment here we could do that and the example always here is that uh, you have a DHCP server at work and you don't have one at home and you want to be able to use your laptop in both places and you put a static address on it when you get to work you can't get onto the network because if we have the static address assigned, we can't automatically get an address. And this one doesn't have the alternative to uh, say, okay, give me a DHCP address here. A people will be there, we can user configure. What we would do is at work, we would get our automatic address and then we put a static address uh, here that would be on our home network or the other way around. Either way will work so that once it doesn't find a DHCP server, one's not running on the one with the alternative address, it'll go to the alternative and instead of getting the APIPA, the automatic one, it'll get the one that we assigned to it. So how they get assigned? DHCP, Dynamic Host uh, Configuration Protocol, 
is the way that we uh, we do those. The IPv4 class ranges address classes. The class is we have three that that actually can we have four total five total uh, three can be assigned to hosts and these are those a b and c class a class b and class c the class a networks go from 1 to 126 127 is actually in the ip class a range but it is a special address called a loopback address reserved for uh, troubleshooting 127.0.0.1 it's called the uh, local host and it, it's reserved for troubleshooting so we can see here 1 to 126 starting with 1.0.0.0 subnet mask 255.0.0.0 which means that we have not that many networks but a tremendous number of hosts per network 16,777,214 network with that many hosts on it, an individual network with that many hosts on it, it's not going to be able to do a whole lot because of the broadcasts with, with today's protocols. Class B networks go from 128, 1 plus the end of the Class A range, to 192. Uh, so it starts with 128, goes to 191, 255, 255, 255. Its subnet mask is 255, 255.0. Dot zero. See a pattern here, I hope. 65,534 addresses hosts. To, we have to add the two to get the maximum number of addresses, the network address and the broadcast address, which can't be assigned to a host. 65,534 on each network. C, 192 to 223. Uh, 255.255.255.0. A lot more networks, fewer hosts per network. 254 is probably a, a more reasonable number. So if we had a uh, an address that was say, uh, let me see if I can scratch on here, 192.168.3.6, the broadcast or the network address for this one would be the zero would be 192.168.3.0 the broadcast and the broadcast is the one that goes to all of the hosts on that network would be 192.168.3.255 we can't assign those two to hosts so what we have remaining are 254 assignable addresses uh, for the so the assignable addresses would be 1 to 254 at the end of this because we only have one octet where we can have host addresses in the class C networks we also have an E a class E and a class F E is, is what's called multicast which goes to a, a number of sing a number of hosts and then F or yeah, yeah a, B, C, yeah, we're wrong. D and E. D is multicast, which you have to subscribe to it, and E is experimental, uh, not assignable. Neither of these are assignable uh, by us. Only the A's, the B's, and the C's can be assigned to hosts uh, for us. Turn the pin off. Subnet mask examples of this thing, and again, this is, is, is kind of a, a repeat above, but it hopefully emphasizes uh, this at 1.0.0.1, and then the network portion 10, actually 10 would be 1. The network portion would be uh, 1. Uh, and the subnet portion, the network portion 10, uh, 255 is the portion that tells us that. The host portion in this case would be 1. The 172.16, one would be the network portion, and then the dot zero dot one would be the host portion of that address. Keep going down to the uh, 192.168.1. tells us that that's the network portion. 0 tells us that the 100 is the uh, host portion of that particular one. Uh, how they're used, the subnet mask, we've kind of talked about that already, I think. Uh, string of ones followed by a string of zeros. The subnet mask cannot 
have mixed ones and zeros. Once you start with ones, you continue with ones until you get to zeros. And then once you get to zeros, you keep going to the end. So you cannot mix these things. Subnet Mass tells Windows that the first 16 bits in this case is the uh, network ID. The last 16 bits are going to be the uh, host portion. Another way that it may be written and the way that IPv6 addresses are written is called CIDR notation, which is uh, the last bullet there. It might be written as forward slash 16. Forward slash 16 means there's 16 ones in the subnet mask. If we had 24, it means there's 24 ones in the subnet mask. We had eight, eight ones in the subnet mask. Forward slash CIDR classless internet domain routing is, is what that stands for. Public IP addresses, I think I alluded early on to public addresses and private addresses. Public addresses are the ones that can be used on the internet. Private addresses are available to anybody that wants to use them. So we have the ability to uh, have private addresses on our networks and we do that and, and private addresses have extended the IPv4 address space for a number of years so that I can use 10 on my network you can use 10 on your network somebody else can use 10 on their network I can use 192.168.3 as a uh, network address you can use 192.168.3 as a network address and anybody that wants to can use that as a network address because it's a private address it's behind a uh, platform or a, a, a process known as NAT network address translation and what network address translation does is translates our private addresses to public addresses that can be used on the internet Pub private addresses are not usable on the internet so we have to translate them to public addresses you and I at home probably use a process called PAT port address translation where we have a single uh, IP address and then we use ports to create a, a connection known as a socket. A socket is an IP address and a port and there are 65,535 ports that are available for each address. So we can get by with having uh, multiple hosts or multiple devices, computers, uh, phones, tablets on our network and they get translated to the single device that our ISP provides. But the private range is 10, the entire 10 Class A network 172.16 through 172.31.255.255 .255 for the Class B networks and 192.168 uh, for the uh, Class C networks. And so the subnet mask for the Class A obviously 255.0.0.0 for the Class B. The mask here is going to be a little different. Uh, than it would normally be because we're not taking the whole 16 range. We had the whole 16 range, 255.255.0. Uh, to 40 is the one that it would be 255.240.0.0 would be the subnet mask for this one. Don't get hung up on that one, just what the range is for the uh, Class B networks. And then for the class C's would be masked with 255.255.255.0. Uh, so three ranges of private addresses that anybody can use without cost. They get translated using the network address translation uh, process to public addresses so that they can be uh, uh, used on the internet. CIDR we talked about earlier uh, replaces the subnet mask with the forward slash number and the number that's after the forward slash is the number of ones that would be in the subnet mask. Easier uh, to use for, for writing and when we start talking about 128 bits for IPv6 it's the only practical way uh, to write those addresses. Reserved addresses here again the private range 10, 172, 192, loopback address for troubleshooting, uh, the APIPA address which we talked about, multicast which I alluded to 
our 224 uh, range is what we're going to use uh, for those. Uh, various addresses are reserved for networking and routing protocols. Typically what you're going to see here is routers use multicast to share information uh, with other routers that are running the same routing protocol on it. A PIPA we talked about, we looked at when we looked at the configuration. If you can't get an IP address, it gives itself one from the 169.254 address space. Uh, the host machine will randomly choose a number to fill the last two octets. Then it will try to reach this number. It will ping that address to see if anybody else has already got it. If they do, it will generate a new one. It's useful for networks if the DHCP server is down. Uh, if the DHCP server is down and you can't get an address, you get an APIPA address, it, that address can only be used on the local network. It can't get outside of that network. In other words, it won't go through the router. And this is supported in, uh, in OS 10 Linux as well as Windows. Said we talk about IPv6 addressing a little bit, and we will talk about IPv6 addressing here for a minute. 128 bits, it's a written in hexadecimal, it's broken up into eight 16 bit sections. Each hexadecimal uh, number here represents four bits. So 16, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16 bits for each of these. Uh, separated by colons. We can see that it's separated by colons here. Get the pen back. So we have these things separated by colons. Too big of a pen, huh? No. Let me separate. Yeah. Separated by colons here uh, can be shortened and we can shorten it by dropping the leading zeros. And if we say here 21 DA D3 and then drop the leading zeros here, 0, 2F3B, drop the leading zero here, 2AA, drop the leading zero, FF, FE, 2A, 9C5A. Further, it can be shortened if we have a string of con consecutive zeros, and I'm going to put two of them in here, they only have one here, can be separated, can be represented one time by a colon colon, and that's what's happened here with this set of zeros, all zeros can be substituted by a colon colon one time. Different prefixes indicate the uh, types of addresses. If it starts with a two, it's going to be a global unicast. Global unicast means that it is routable and assignable to an interface, to a printer, a computer, a server, a uh, tablet, phone, NIC, whatever else. Colon colon one the only easy thing to write is the loopback address. It's the equivalent of the 127.0.0.1 for IPv4. FE80, a PIPA is a good way to think about it. They're really, the proper term would be uh, local, link local addresses. So they're link local addresses. Uh, huge, huge improvement here. Uh, IPv6, 340 undecillion, 3.4 uh, times 10 to the 38th power, whereas IPv4 have 4.3 billion. So we got 4.3 billion addresses in IPv4 and we're out of them. 4.3 times 10 to the ninth is what that number would be. So the numbers that we have, when we write these addresses up here, we use the CIDR notation for them. Forward slash 64 would say that the first 64 bits is network. So it says 64 ones in the network address. Rather than trying to write FFs or, or FFs underneath these things. Uh, so forward slash 64 uses the uh, uses the CIDR notation uh, by default. There's not a whole lot of configuration in IPv6. The types of addresses that we have, global unicast, same way as IPv4 public addresses, link local the same way as IPv4 APIPA addresses, link local is on the local network a site local is something that's different than IPv4. It's for a, a site uh, that can be assigned, kind of like the, uh, the private addresses uh, for the IPv4 space. Uh, special addresses, 
Uh, we know valid IPv6, all zeros, and that's like any address, or you can be written as a colon colon. If you don't have an address, that's the, it, like if you're going for DHCP, that would be the source address that you would use. The loopback address we looked at is colon colon one. Uh, compatibility issues, IPv4 and IPv6 are entirely separate protocols. They can't be used together. They can run simultaneously on the same device and, and then when they, when, they, when they do that we call that a dual stack arrangement so that we have both IPv4 and IPv6 running and what happens there is the system tries to use IPv6 first it's more efficient more secure and if the destination is not IPv6 capable then it will use IPv4 in the situation. If we use the IP, uh, viewing the IP address information, if we look at what we have, uh, IP config at the uh, Windows command line, it's going to give us the information about our device. I did an IP config on my machine and it has IPv6 and IPv4. We can have them both. I have an IPv6 address. We said it started with the two. 2605. I also have a link local address. We're going to have both. The link local addresses are going to start with FE80. Then I have an IPv4 address along with the subnet mask. And if you think back of that 192, 168.1, was the private class C addresses. And then the 255 kind of seals the deal that it's going to be a, a class C address. And then a default gateway. The default gateway is the address of the router. Some other ones down here have some virtual machine routers and a wireless uh, that are also available on this particular network. Dynamic versus static, we talked about uh, the DHCP server. Dynamic address comes from it. Uh, let me scratch out the process once more. Here we have, we come online. Let's say we have our machine and we have the, uh, the uh, DHCP server here. We send a discover message to the DHCP server. And all of this, this is a broadcast, so all of the DHCP servers that are running are going to get that. It sends us back an offer. And we will accept the offer of the first DHCP server that answers. And we will send a request. And once it gets our request, it will send us back an acknowledgement that says, okay, you can have it. The process, the easy way to remember it is DORA, Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledge. Static IP address, we looked at uh, a unique value for each computer device manually configured on the device itself. Uh, it does not change. DHCP addresses may change. They typically don't, but they may. Uh, looking things up, DNS, uh, domain name servers are, are available to translate names, www.google.com, into IP addresses. And the gateway is the IP address or the computer or device that connects to the internet. We'll say the router. And because even if it is a Windows Server configured as a router, it's going to be the, the uh, address of the router. Same for all computers or devices on the network because that's the way we're going to get out of the network. Hence the name uh, Gateway, the gateway to get out. DHC and a people, we looked at that earlier, obtain IP address automatically. Automatic private IP address assignment, we go in and click on the use this one, use the configured, and we type in our own address. And again, homework, one has a DHCP server, one doesn't. If both have a DHCP server, you can just leave it as to get it automatically. To type it in, we looked at that. We can also, with a DNS server, the, the location where we're going to get our uh, name uh, to IP address resolution on these things. TCP IP settings, a number of things that you can have here, IP, uh, the DNS in it, and as well as WINS if you have that Windows Internet Naming Service, if you have an application that needs WINS. It's an old protocol 
uh, that I guess some applications are still available that need it. DHCP process, DORA, discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. We talked about that one. The last thing we'll look at here is the DNS process. And the DNS process is I want to go to my laptop, desktop, tablet, whatever I have here. I want to go to www.yahoo.com for whatever reason. First I go to my name server. It's going to look in its cache. If it has that in the cache, it immediately sends the IP address to me. If it doesn't have it in the cache, we have these upda updates. We go to the root name server. The root is, is represented by a dot. The root name server says, I don't know where www.yahoo.com is, but I know the address of the .com name server, authoritative name server for .com. So it sends us the, the com name server. We go to the com name server. I want www.yahoo.com. Well, I don't know, but I know the name of the Yahoo uh, name server. So it tells us the address of the Yahoo name server. We go to it, and we've got Google here, the, uh, the authoritative uh, name server for Google. We'll switch from Yahoo to Google. The Google, I need the address of the www.google.com. It gives us, here it says, the, the Google name server. What it probably would return is the IP of the www server itself. And then my, whatever I have in my IP configuration is going to send that IP address to me. And then I go on the internet using that IP address. And I think that's my last slide for this. Uh, I hope this has been of some use to you on how uh, IP works in this thing. I say, okay, wait a minute. I said I was going to look at the network card properties. Let me get a network card up here and we'll look at some of those properties real quick. Okay, we'll bring this one back over here. We'll look at a real Ethernet here. We're going to look at the properties of it. And now we're going to go into the NIC up here and look at configure. And in the, the configure, we'll go in advanced, and we have a number of properties that are available. Uh, the ones that are, are part of the uh, A+, plus, half duplex, or full duplex. So speed and duplex, ours is set for auto negotiation. And what that says is that I'll negotiate with the switch or the device, in my case, the uh, a home router that I'm plugged into so that I match the highest speed that's available on that device. Uh, wake on LAN, uh, see wake, and this, which is wake on magic packet, LAN local area network is enable what the magic packet is, is a, uh, a digital packet that goes to a device that says, hey, wake up and do something like uh, uh, maybe uh, do an update or something like that. I don't think that mine has a quality of service. What quality of service does is assigns different uh, addresses, different services, uh, different uh, amounts of bandwidth that's available. For instance, if I had voice over IP, I would probably uh, want that to uh, be able to uh, uh, have a higher priority and here we have your priority I did find it priority and VLAN uh, when we do that if I had a BIOS on the NIC I would be able to configure it this one really doesn't have a BIOS but BIOS basic input output uh, I've seen uh, what's available hopefully on a computer uh, the things that are available be a similar sort of circumstance uh, for a NIC so I think that now we've covered about half of the uh, uh, objectives for networking uh, for A plus uh, the 902 test. With that, I want to thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful.